Um, this is, as I first started renewal ownership, I got to tell you, it was probably four years before I got my head wrapped around this concept. And um, it is covered very well in the HWH Air Systems Handbook on page seven. There's a nice little diagram of how all this works. So Google HWH Air Systems Handbook and download yourself a copy of it. If you can't find it, come by my place with a thumb drive and I'll give you a copy. Ride height control valve. Probably at least a dozen different manufacturers. But in principle, they all work the same way. One part of the valve, this part of the valve, is usually mounted to a frame rail, part of the stationary chassis. There will be a pivot point here and a rod that comes down that is mounted to the axle. If the coach is higher than the rod length, in other words, it fits way up off the tires, this arm will come down. Yes? That makes sense. The axle's here. They're too far. This will come down. When this comes down, it opens this airport, this exhaust to the atmosphere, and it lets air out of the system. It lets air out of the airbag. So the coach settles on the airbags. As it's settling, this comes back up, and when it hits neutral, it shuts off. If the coach is low on the tires, it will push the arm up, which allows supply air to come in through this valve and make its way to the airbags and inflate them. It's used on virtually all over the road truck tractors. It's a well-known system, well-engineered system, and it works like a train. And it's really, really simple as long as you don't have any notion that if that vehicle is parked on unlevel ground that you would like for it to sit level. Because what this system is going to do is make it level with the tires, not level with the horizon. So if you're sitting on a slope like that, the vehicle will be sitting on a slope like that. It'll be evenly spaced at all the fender wells, but the vehicle will be sitting sideways. If you don't want to sleep like that, then you've got to somehow defeat this system. You go, why is he going through this rigmarole? The most common misconception is that the six pack feeds the height control valve. And that is backwards. Air supply from the supply line is fed directly into the height control valve. And the output of the height control valve feeds the six pack at the travel solenoid. In this six pack, I'm going to pass one around so you can sort of see it. The valve's mount on this side, but what I want you to, to see is that going this way, connecting the three valves, there is a hole drilled this way in the six pack that can, connects all three of those going this way.
If the travel solenoid is open, then we have an air path from the hype control valve that comes through the six pack. There is a second fitting on the back of the six pack that goes to a tank that is welded into the frame of the coach. And there is one of these tanks for each airbag, except for the drive airbags where there's two on each side. So you have an airbag on each side in the front. On the drive axle, you have two airbags on each side. And on the tag axle, you have one airbag. So a tank will feed one of those airbags. Except the older ones that have four airbags on each axle. Um, yes, with straight front axles. You're exactly right. Thank you. The tank, usually using about a one inch diameter hose, those things are massive, is connected to the airbag. So now, the ignition is on, this valve is open. We talked about what happens, all right? The coach is low. The arm comes up. It emits air through the height control valve. It comes through the six pack. Air goes into the tank. Air goes into the airbag. Airbag inflates. Coach raises. Coach is too high. Arm moves in the other direction and starts to exhaust air. So it now shuts itself off from the air supply, but it's taking the air pressure all the way from the airbag, back through the tank, back through the six pack, and out the exhaust port on the height control valve. You turn the ignition off. The electrical signal to that solenoid valve ceases. It's closed. Ignition off. There is not a path from the height control valve to the airbag. Do we have any naysayers? You got that. Ignition off, travel solenoid closed. There is not a path from the height control valve to the airbag. It's closed. All right. Cool. Put the coach in level mode. I'm not talking about auto level mode because that brings the computer into play. The computer does the same thing that you do in level mode. But put it in level mode. I want to lower, I want to let the pressure out of an airbag. I push the down button. This solenoid opens. And when it opens, it opens to a hole that is exposed to the atmosphere, an exhaust port. When it opens, air moves from the air bag, through the air tank, to the six pack, and out that hole in the back. If we were not isolated from the height control valve and we let air out of the air bag, what is the height control valve trying to do now? It's trying to raise the coach back up. And there's actually increased air pressure in this line trying to raise the coach now. Except this is closed and it can't get to the airbag. All right. That corner of the coach is low. We want to raise it. Well, the air supply that's feeding the height control valve is not going to do me any good. Right? Because it can't get there. 
So if you look at the six pack and the one in the engine compartment is the easiest one to see, you will see a blue air line run into the end of it. And the sole purpose of that blue air line going into the six pack is when you hit the raise button, it opens this solenoid. You now have 120 pounds of pressure available. And as long as that solenoid is open, it's pressurizing this line that goes through the tank to the airbag. With the engine off. With the engine off. With the key off. The key off. Or it in level yeah. mode. Right. Your key can be on if you're in level mode, it turns off the travel valve. And now you get into Newell, HWH, manual system, uh, valid system intricacies about when these travel valves automatically engage. Some of them are purely manual, some of them you have to push a button, some of them as soon as you put it in drive. I mean, they're. they're I've run across infinite variations on how that happens. You just have to understand how it works with your coach. Because even with someone who has an HWH leveling system, there's different software programs locate, loaded into them depending upon what year they were issued. Does this compute to you? Have I beat it to a bloody pulp? No, not yet. All right. Here's where I start drawing. This is where it gets a little funny, and I wish Mike were here um, so that we could explain this better. Up to the rear first. Got a six valve. Got six valves on it. I believe that the top is the left side and the bottom is the right side. So it's just what we drew. Go to the front. Six pack looks exactly like that. So in other words, on this side, this is going to go to the left airbag. Conversation. All right. Now, height control valve. A line coming in from the right height control valve. This goes to the right airbags. It is almost just like that in the front, almost. Except on the front, you got lines going to the left bags, you got lines going to the right bags, but you only have one height control valve. And it is right in the center of the coach. And the airline that comes out of it, instead of going directly to the six pack, goes into a T and feeds both feeds the right and the left side of the six pack. Now in the back, going down the road, the left hand height control valve is going to adjust whatever pressure it needs in those airbags to keep the coach a certain distance off the tires. The right hand height control valve is going to do the same for the right hand side. But in the front, you only want to have one height control valve in the center of the coach, 
And because this airline coming out of the one height control valve tees, the pressure on each side going into the airbags is exactly the same. So anytime the travel solenoid is energized, the pressure in the front airbags are the same regardless of the side-to-side -side weight distribution. And what that allows your coach to do is to go down the highway and as the coach sees undulations, because these two pressures are the same and air is free to move back and forth between the right and the left side, it allows the front end to float just a little bit, to twist just a little bit, to make up for whatever happens in the road going over a bump or whatnot. Because if these were not free to float relative to one another, we know these in the back do not float relative to one another, then you've got four hard corners. And if you put one of those corners up on a 12-inch cinder block, and they're all four holding steady, you will put a 12-inch torque in the coach from front to back. So the reason that those two float to one another is to keep you from twisting the coach. It still twists, but not as much. This feeds into the um, conversation we had the other day about do you put your slides out first, then level, or do you level and then put your slides out? If you put your slides out when you're in the travel mode, the front is free to align itself with the rear. Even if the rear is sitting on the slope, the front is free to twist with the slope. As soon, and so there is no additional torque to the frame. Therefore, the rooms will go in and out without having some additional applied to them. Once you get them out, when you put this in level mode, Remember, in level mode, the airbags are isolated from the height control valve. Because they're isolated, you or the computer are now free to adjust the pressures from side to side in the front airbags to be different. And because you can do that, you can twist the coach. Clear as mud.